Um, Dr. Simi, I want to start with you because this is something that we don't get to talk about a lot. It's rarely discussed in a public setting, yet it's impacted so many women. Now, for me, I talked about my hair was falling out in clumps, which was terrifying to me. It has since grown back and it's still growing back. Um, but there are many symptoms of, of fibroids that some women may not even know this is what's bothering them. So walk us through what women should be looking for and how they know this is something that they should address immediately. Absolutely. So one of the most common symptoms of fibroids is heavy menstrual bleeding. It's kind of what you hear in the news, everyone's talking about the anemia and the fatigue that comes with it. But fibroids can cause a beret of symptoms. Some women will only notice that their abdomen is a little bit larger than it used to be. Like you said, they are working out, they're trying to get their abdomen flat and it won't. Or they may have back pain. Back pain, there's so many causes of it, but fibroids can impact things like pelvic pain, back pain, pain with intercourse, and then some women have extremely subtle symptoms. They may just have a change in their discharge, and I don't want everyone to run out and say they have fibroids that they have that, but those are one of the symptoms not talked about, and then some silent symptoms like infertility. So, um, Ms. Wanda, you and I talked before about some of the things you experienced, and I was so moved by your emotional testimony because not only did you have fibroids, but you had other challenges as well, and you talked about what it felt like that as black women, our bodies are not prioritized, our health issues are not uh, brought to the front and center as they should be. Talk about what you went through with fibroids. Yes, um, as we discussed last week, I had just recently been diagnosed with fibroids. But over the years, I had all of the symptoms of fibroids, but never was fibroids considered until a couple of, um, about a year and a half ago, um, my African-American doctor suggested that I get a scan. And then the scan it showed that I had fibroids. But over the years, um, I had those symptoms, but because I'm in menopause now, um, the fibroids have shrunk because of low estrogen and progesterone, which is normal in menopause. But it really is alarming to me that I had so many symptoms. I had hair loss, I had uh, heavy menstrual cycles, I had fatigue, um, and hair, lo hair loss, as I mentioned, and it was never considered. And so that really bothered me once I realized that fibroids were, could have possibly been the reason for all of that. And, you know, because it's not discussed a lot, we don't always recognize those sy symptoms um, as fibroids. Dr. Uh, Hawkins, I will tell you, um, I had a scar as a result of the hysterectomy, and I was so shamed about it and self-conscious about it. And how I knew this problem was so prevalent is because, um, you know, when other women, I would talk to them, they'd say, oh, let me see your scar. Look at my scar. And it was like everybody had this scar. Um, so because it's so common, uh, the treatment is, is also um, questionable. Right. So why are so many black women um, treated with hysterectomies when there are clearly other options? I made the choice that was best for me, but some women do not want to go that route. And yet they feel like that's their only option. Yeah, and a lot of that lays on the healthcare provider. I will say that we should take full ownership and not, um, unfortunately, sometimes providing women, especially black women. There are studies that have looked at this with minimally invasive options, meaning could we have done this laparoscopically instead of having such a scar as the one that you're um, saying that you had, or do they have other options altogether? There are options now to shrink fibroids. Of course, there are options to just remove them or do what's called an embolization. So a lot of times that is the responsibility of the healthcare providers to let them know. Unfortunately, the truth is a lot of providers will feel like a hysterectomy is just an easier route to go. That is unfortunate. And Ms. Wanda, I think you brought up something really uh, important, and that's being menopausal while going through fibroids, which those symptoms may take on an entirely uh, you know, different look when you're uh, menopausal. Um, talk about what it's like going through fibroids, go also going through menopause. Did it exacerbate you know, hot flashes? Uh, did it impact you know, your mood? Just explain what you're going through. I would say yes. Um, the high flashes are on 100, I must say. Um, and I, 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 gosh, it's hard to deal with. But, and, and it has affected me. My hair recently just started um, falling out and thinning out, and I have really thick hair. So that's been, um, my doctor told me that's possible, a possible symptom of fibroids. And as we discussed with the uh, Black Women's Health and Heritage Roundtable um, last week, there are symptoms during during menopause that sometimes are attributed to other conditions. Like I have thyroid uh, issues. I have um, some other um, 
uh, health issues, and some of the symptoms have been attributed to that. And as I said earlier, it was never brought to my attention that it could possibly be uh, fibroids. And so now I am really researching um, some of the symptoms that I'm going through in the correlation with other illnesses along with my doctor to see in fact, if, if I should take the next step and have surgery, um, I don't want to get a hysterectomy. Um, even though I'm in menopause, that's just a part of my womanhood that I just don't want to let go so uh, easily. And so we're coming up with some different ideas of what we're going to do next. And so I'm, I'm now in the process of figuring out how we're going to deal with the fibroids. Well, keep us posted. We definitely uh, want to keep up with uh, your health, Miss Wanda. And um, Dr. Hawkins, I, you know, a lot of people, my friend Brittany Packner Cunningham says we should have a book on what to expect when you're aging, the <laughs> same way we do and what to expect when you're uh, pregnant, because what we go through in our bodies, you know, it's constantly changing each decade, it's felt like for me. Um, but for women who, you know, saw my testimony and they're like, oh, no way, I don't want to be in the hospital for weeks. Sometimes people are in the hospital for hours, you know, it's not even an overnight surgery, so everybody's different. But can you talk Talk about what impact um, fibroids may have on fertility, because for people who are younger and do want children, um, you know, they may have a lot of questions about the best treatment for them. Absolutely, and I think one of the things that comes to a lot of women's mind as soon as they find out their diagnosis is their fertility, especially if they may have been asymptomatic. A lot of women find out about their fibroids when they're di when they're pregnant. They find out with that first ultrasound, which leads me to the point that you can get pregnant with fibroids. A lot of times it depends on the location and that symptomatology um, and your ability to try to get pregnant. Unfortunately, there's also that subset of women who have a very difficult time getting getting pregnant with fibroids, again, because of that location. Location is what matters. And I always encourage women to partner with their primary GYN physician as well as a reproductive endocrinology physician, a subspecialist in here to say, okay, do these fibroids need to be removed? Is it okay and healthy for me to get pregnant with fibroids? Am I looking at an increased risk of things like miscarriage and preterm labor and preterm delivery? Um, because we don't know how to predict right. exactly affected.